ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attending today and honoring our Gold Star family and dedicating their ceremony, uh, their monument, excuse me. I would like to thank the Port St. Lucie City Council, our mayor and our vice mayor, and the members of the Gold Star families and all that put efforts into bringing this event to fruition. And also for help in getting this established here in the park and with the help of the Parks and Recreation Department. The City Council of Port St. Lucie, the St. Lucie County Board of Com County Commissioners, and any other county officials that are here this afternoon, thank you so much for coming. Good afternoon, and again, welcome to the dedication of the Gold Star Families Memorial. Your presence here today indicates that you're here in support of these Gold Star mothers and families that have sacrificed the loss of a son or daughter while serving in our armed forces of the United States and the daily struggles to comprehend their loss. In early May 2015, a vocal group, a local group, excuse me, was sent to Tampa, was invited to Tampa uh, to Tampa Franklin Middle Magna School, or this all boys school, raised $50,000 for the Gold Star Families Memorial Monument, dedicated May 21st, 2015. In the trip to Tampa, two Gold Star mothers, Linda Schumann and Karen Zook, joined with Roy Brewer for a trip to Tampa. Upon arriving at the school for the dedication, the Gold Star mothers were welcomed and escorted to their seating areas, as it was for above normal hot Florida afternoon, which is strange. <laughs> when he was introduced to Karen and Linda, he hugged them, spoke with them, gave each a pin to wear, and then left to meet other guests attending the ceremony. The dedication was very moving with all the different speakers, the story of how these young men raised the necessary funds to erect this very unique but awesome Black Granite Gold Star Family Memorial, a tangible object that can't touch Brewer States. Just touching this memorial gave him a feeling of understanding and that is hard to describe even today. For Karen and Linda to be part of the ceremony was very emotional for them and all the Gold Star mothers and their families who attended. Upon the return to Port St. Lucie, Mr. Brewer, Mrs. Hook, and Ms. Schumann discussed the many issues related to the Gold Star Family's memorial. Each mother was asked to discuss with their husbands for a possible Gold Star Family Memorial Monument to be located in the city of Port St. Lucie. After the weekend end was over, Brewer received calls from Linda and Karen to go forward and build a Gold Star Family Memorial here in Veterans Memorial Park. In August, September time frame of 2015, they started the fundraising process. They met with city officials, received approval for use of the ground in Veterans Memorial Park. Our groundbreaking ceremony took place on Monday, February 8th, 2016 at 1 p.m. this day is one of the most memorial, memorable moments for the Gold City of Port St. Lucie and the citizens and for the students who were involved, faculty and staff that is of Northport K Middle School. This was the first for the city and the school to have the MOH recipient, Woody Williams visit. Thank you to the city and Northport K Middle School for providing such an awesome welcome to Mr. Williams. <laughs> These young people at the school did a tremendous job. We not believe the effort they went through. Ladies and gentlemen, brother and sister veterans in our motorcycle groups, brothers and sisters, active duty personnel and good citizens of Fort Pierce, Fort St. Lucie, St. Lucie County, and the Romney's cities and counties welcome. Okay. 
Gentlemen, post into colors. All rise. this time, we have the Pledge of Allegiance, cited by Michelle Dale, Evelyn DePagna, and Fran Wilson. Now we will have our national anthem sang by Miss Pat Gisler. Shafir Loeb. Thank you. Uncover! We are thankful for breezes that blow. <laughs> and I am so pleased to see so many faces of people who've come out to recognize 
I'm the daughter of immigrants. My father served in the military. I'm married to a Vietnam vet. I am proud to have worn the blue uniform of our Air Force. I am the sister of another Vietnam vet. I can't begin to describe the feelings that I hold toward the families, the Gold Star families. But I know that that is part of what makes our country what it is. So beautiful, so wonderful, and such a welcome place to so many of us. The Jewish prayer that remembers those that we have lost reminds us that they are in God's presence, sheltered by God at this time, bound to all other treasured souls. The prayer says, God on high and in our hearts, grant reassuring peace. I think that's for us to know that your cover of presence is with the men and women who gave their lives in the defense of our country and for the freedom of the entire world. As you shelter them among the righteous souls, may they be radiant and luminous as they shine in the firmament. Source of compassion, may we continue to feel their touch within and on our souls. And may the day when peace and security shall prevail and nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor shall they prepare any war, come soon, yea, in our day. Then will the world stand together as one, as we remember the memory of our fallen brothers and sisters, and may they be an inspiration to us and a comfort and a blessing to all of their loved ones. El male rachamim, shochen bamromim, hamsei menucha nechona, al kanfei hashchina, v'maalot kedoshim utohorim, kezohar harakia mazhirim, et nishmot achenu anshe hachayil, asher herenu memavet nafsham ba'ad arzenu, lecherut ha'olam. Lachen ba'al harachamim hisarem baseter kenafecha laolamim, ve yitzror bitzror hachayim et nishmatam, bind their souls, em nashmot hatzadikim umoadim lefanecha, that they may stand in righteousness before you. Vahayam asehem tzedaka shalom, vatech ad olam, add their deeds to the righteousness of peace and comfort and security for all of the world. Lo yisagoi el goi cherev velo yilmeduod milchama. There will come a day when we will have peace and live together with our brethren in their honor and in their memory. Ura'u kol basar v'dam yachdav v'tehei menuchato kvod shavasam chot al panecha v'nimot b'mnecha netzach v'nomar and let us all say Amen. Now, Mr. Clay Schumann. I have to readjust this. Thank you, Rabbi. Those were generous words. They meant a lot to me. I, I'm here to give the invocation. I'm a gold star father. And... I don't know if too many of you know this, but I've been watching the dragonflies dance behind us and the significant significance of what a dragonfly means to a gold star family. For those you don't know, they represent our fallen children. And when we see dragonflies dancing around, it's our way of knowing they're with us in our presence. Isn't it amazing what God can do? So as they dance around here this, this day, know that they're here with us. May I ask you gentlemen to please uncover as we go to the Lord God in prayer. Almighty God, we've gathered here this day as a grateful nation and community called to this sacred assembly to pay tribute to families who've endured a very high cost for our freedoms. Lord, your spirit has been with us as a community these past months. And as this memorial has been planned and now completed, we thank you. We also thank you, God, that you have placed when all, within all of us a seed, a seed of promise that no sacrifice of selflessness shall ever be forgotten. 
I pray now that you would come and be in our midst as we acknowledge not only your sovereignty, but also your providence in this great United States of America. As we've built this nation on the foundation of your word, I'm reminded of what the prophet of old Isaiah said as he spoke to your children, reminding them and us still today that you have each of us inscribed in the memories within the palms of your hands. Lord, this memorial, although is etched in stone, represents what is in our hearts and will be a lasting tribute of our fallen sons and daughters, all of whom are your children. They gave their lives to protect everyone who's gathered here, and we turn to you, O oh God, to give thanks for that ultimate price that they have paid, but also to the families of our fallen that have been left behind. This day, O oh God, is difficult for so many of us, for it brings back the memory of those that have gone on and will not return. Help us, I pray, to learn to turn to you in our days of need. May this Gold Star Family Memorial, built of concrete and granite, but mortared with the blood of our children, be a lasting tribute to those who it represents. May it always be considered a hallowed place, a place for those to cry, to laugh, a place to remember the good and the not so good, all memories akin to our children who did not return here to their earthly homes. I thank you, God, for all these memories as a father that I have that I will always hold near and dear to my heart. But I also thank you for what you've been constructing here at this Vietnam or this Veterans Memorial Park here in Port St. Lucie to remind us all that our freedoms are never free. I thank you, Lord God, and ask you all these things in the name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We thank you, Gold Star Father Clashim. Ladies and gentlemen, be seated. Unveiling of the Gold Star Families Memorial Monument. This memorial will give the Gold Star Families a place to visit and reflect, reflect upon their sacrifices. Let there be no doubt that this memorial being of shiny black granite, members of the Gold Star Families who stand before will see their reflection. They may also see yet another reflection of the lost loved one, if only for a moment. Be it known that one individual dared enough about the Gold Star families that he and others put together an idea to recognize these Gold Star families who for many years sacrificed a loved one while serving in the military. What an awesome tribute to the Gold Star families and to those sons and daughters who gave their all in the name of freedom. I can't find the appropriate words that are fitting to say to Hershel Woody Williams, Medal of Honor Foundation, Woody, Brent, and Brian Casey, and many others for designing this very unique memorial. Perhaps as the rays from the sun reflect off this black rent memorial, we could represent words of silence of the hearts and souls of those who gave by their all and the Gold Star families' sacrifices of past yesterday's today and all tomorrows. This afternoon, a special guest speaker. Special guest speakers will, of course, be honored 
Medal of Honor recipient, Herschel Woody Williams, and Major General Michael Plain, U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff, Southern Command. General Plain is Chief of Staff of the U.S. Southern Command based in Doral, Florida. He's responsible for successfully integrating and synchronizing efforts of non dictatorates and special staff offices in support of combatant commanders' theater campaign plan. General Plain graduated from U.S. Air Force Academy with military dis distinction in 1988 with a degree in astronautical engineering. That would be fine. <laughs> Welcome, Jim. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a solemn honor to stand with you this afternoon as we de dedicate this memorial monument to our Gold Star families. When Mark and Karen Zook, who lost their son Ian in Iraq in 2004, invited me to participate in this dedication ceremony this past March, I knew there could be no more important thing I could do this weekend than share that time with you. Among the many who have made it possible to dedicate this monument today, including the Zooks and their fellow committee members, is Medal of Honor recipient Woody Williams. Sir, we would not be standing here today if not for your efforts, both for this monument, honoring our Gold Star families and their fallen loved ones, but also for the sacrifices you and your generation made so you could hand Liberty's legacy to future generations of Americans, to us, to our mothers and fathers, wives and husbands, sisters and brothers, sons and daughters, to our generation of service members, to our comrades in arms. And like you, Mr. Williams, they were not spared the responsibility, the obligation for defending our precious freedom. Like you, they heard and answered the call. But before our fellow service members, your loved ones came to us, before they answered the call and joined our nation's military, they spent years with you, their families and friends. You gave them love and encouragement. You gave them values and morals. You gave them rides to football practice and soccer games, to band practice and scouting events and a hundred other things. You molded them into the men and women who would come to us, raise their right hand and swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies. Your fallen loved ones answered the call. And when they did, we gave them uniforms and haircuts. We gave them training and new skills. And they developed discipline and confidence as they grew into their roles as service members and leaders in our military. We sent them off to posts and installations far and near where they performed with distinction and valor, with a humble dedication to accomplishing the mission, a commitment to getting the job done and moving on to the next one. Because when you are in the business of defending freedom, the work is never done. The job is never over. You do it for as long as you are able, and then someone else takes up the torch, picks up the colors, continues forging ahead. And sometimes that service comes to an end far more abruptly than any of us ever thought it might. Had hoped and prayed that it wouldn't, and then it does. And now you're part of another family, one that you didn't want to be a part of until you were a part of it. Gold Star families have a special place in my heart as they do for all our service members, past, present, and future. You remind us of your fallen loved one, of our fallen friend and teammate. You remind us of what we're defending and why. You remind us, should that almost unthinkable day come to pass for our family, you will be there for us and for them, as so many other Gold Star families have been there 
for you. Many of us know one or more Gold Star families, and we're honored to have so many of you here with us today. But we are not Gold Star families ourselves. We do not know your depth of loss, your grief, your pain, but your fellow Gold Star families do. And this week, a friend shared with me a copy of a letter he received recently from a Gold Star wife, Mrs. Teresa Adams. I don't think she'll mind if I share a few of her thoughts with you. Being in the Gold Star family, yes, family, is coupled with sorrow, pride, and at times, painful laughter. That type of laughter is the kind one never thinks they will experience again after they suffer a loss. We have that. We weep and we laugh, and sometimes it's simultaneous. We understand each other. We need each other. The children need to be with their peers, which are not always in their schools and play groups. I remember the first Gold Star event I went to, she said. I had a mini chip on my shoulder and a titanium force shield around my emotions. I believe I needed nobody and I would be fine. I was new to this life. I met a veteran widow. We do exist. She was happy. She was what I saw in my own future. This sweet woman told me with her actions as well as words that there is life after your love is gone. The hurt does not disappear, but becomes cloudy and muted. Years later, I attended another event. I was the veteran widow, and I saw the old me walk in. I chatted with her, and I only hope through my smile that she saw her own possible future. There is healing in healing, and the cycle possesses only love, sympathy, empathy, and compassion. That's why it's right for us to meet here today on Gold Star Mother and Family Day 2016 to remember our fallen loved ones as we cannot help but do every day, but also to honor you and remember the sacrifices you and your families have endured to reflect on the life and the lives commemorated by the Gold Star. If you're ever in Washington, D.C., I hope you have time and the opportunity to visit the memorials and monuments there, and especially the World War II Memorial. Among the many stirring symbols of that memorial is a wall containing more than 4,000 gold stars on pristine marble. Each star represents 100 service members who did not come home to their loved ones. More than 400,000 service members in all. And each and every one of them had tens, if not hundreds, of their own family members and friends who grieved at their loss. Represented by every gold star, there is an unfinished story, an unfinished life, and many, many changed lives of dreams, hopes, memories that we carry with us daily. And that is what we recognize and remember with this Gold Star Families Memorial Monument. We honor you and remember you who have sacrificed so much, who have your own unfinished and changed stories and changed lives because of your loved one's service to our nation. If you'll allow me, I'd like to close with some of the powerful prose of President Abraham Lincoln. I couldn't say it half as well or half as quickly, so I'll use his words. In 1863, during the dedication of the ceremony at Gettysburg, President Lincoln said, the world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who have fought here have thus far so nobly advanced, for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. In 1864, President Lincoln penned a letter to Mrs. Bixby, who had lost several sons in the Civil War. 
acknowledging the depth of her loss and wishing that she would be left with the cherished memory of the loved and lost and the solemn pride that must be yours to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. And finally, in March 1865, at his second inaugural address, barely a month before his own death, President Lincoln entreated us to help, heal, and persevere, saying, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. To our Gold Star families, we love you. We remember you and your fallen loved ones who have borne the battle. And in this monument, we shall remember their sacrifice and yours, always. Thank you, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, um, we're going to just hold for a second uh, Mr. Al Carter, who is the Deputy Executive Director for the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs, is going to read the Governor's Proclamation. Mr. Carter, please. State of Florida Resolution. Whereas Florida owes a debt of gratitude to those who gave their lives in service to secure the blessings of liberty. And whereas a debt of gratitude is also owed to our Gold Star families, parents, spouses, siblings, and children who have lost a loved one who made the greatest sacrifice of all in protecting our way of life and whereas these families once experienced the anxiety of watching their loved ones go off to military service, not knowing whether they would return, and whereas these families will always feel a deep grief, grief of losing their spouse, sibling, son or daughter in both combat and non-combat environments, and whereas Floridians today enjoy the peace and security our nation and state have achieved through the sacrifices of American citizens. Florida Gold Star Mothers can take solace in knowing that their loved ones left all humanity a legacy of invaluable meaning. And whereas in respect and recognition of the sacrifices of our Gold Star Mothers, the United States Congress by Senate Joint Resolution 115 on June 23rd, 1936, designated the last Sunday in September as Gold Star Mother's Day and authorized and requested the president to issue a proclamation and observance of this day. And whereas we recognize that not only mothers, but families make sacrifices as spouses, siblings, sons and daughters, now joined our armed forces, and we so in Florida believe that it is the whole family who is due our unwavering support and admiration for the tremendous sacrifices made. Now, therefore, be it further resolved that the governor and cabinet of the state of Florida do hereby proclaim the last Sunday in September of each year as Gold Star Family Day in Florida and call upon communities across the state of Florida. <laughs> and call upon communities across the state of Florida to honor all those families and join together in a fitting salute to our Gold Star families. In testimony whereof the governor and cabinet of the state of Florida have unto subscribed their names and have caused the official seal of Florida to hereunto be affixed in the city of Tallahassee on this 20th day of September 2016. And it is signed Rick Scott, Governor, Pam Bondi, Attorney General, Jeff Adwater, Chief Financial Officer, 
and Adam Putnam, Commissioner of Agriculture. And I present this to you. Oh, thank you very much. Wally? Wally, would you come take this, please? Thank you, Mr. Carter. Um, I'm not going to read. If everybody's got a um, program, you can read Woody's bios. I can only tell you from personal experience for the last six years, this man hasn't changed one iota. He's a gentleman's gentleman, but he's a true patriot. <laughs> Okay, yeah, go on Google, <laughs> we said, say, get it. Okay, anyway, uh, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce you. Please give him a standing and round of applause, Herschel Woody Williams. <laughs> at home, so he has to away also. Thank you very much. What an outpouring of love and honor we see here today. You know, love is one of those things that we can't touch. We can't really see it, but oh, how we can feel it. And it's very prevalent here today. I have said before, continue to say and emphasize that this is not about me. This is about them. They are the reason we are here, because they made the sacrifice. And it is our high privilege to be able to honor them for that sacrifice. You know, it was probably, I can speak personally maybe, our mothers and our wives or those we were engaged to, or the one we called our partner. Those were the folk who prayed for us and prayed that we would be safe and that we would get home. Father sort of stood tall and encouraged his sons to stand tall, be a man. And, and he encouraged us to do that. All family members of any degree, regardless of the re relationship to an individual who gives his life for our country, they all suffer the same grief. Oh, I have no doubt in my mind that mothers grieve more deeply and no doubt much longer because of the very close relationship that they had with their loved one. But without communities, folk like you. This could never happen. It takes togetherness and a united effort to bring these things to bear and to do what we should have been doing long, long ago. But this is a day of certainly of remembering. 
And as the general said, time will not erase. It'll still be there. But maybe these kinds of gatherings and respect and honor will ease that hurt just a little. Because maybe we're making some sort of an assurance that that loved one will not be forgotten. And how important that is. This day reminds us perhaps of times gone by and there are memories flowing through the minds out here of times past. But these words that, and we only know what we're taught or what we learn. And these words are a long time ago, but just appropriate. We will rally round the flag. What that means to each one of us is individual, but all of us have a value in it. Showing the battle cry of freedom and we think of our beginning, think of where we were so many years ago. And then these words, we are the dead. Short days ago, we loved, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved, and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Then the war that changed the world. The words of today that can be part of all of us, that I am proud to be an American. I know I am free and I won't forget the men and women who died who gave that right to be. Families do great. Sisters and brothers will miss, of course, their, their loved one, their brother and sister. Widows will miss their husbands. Husbands will miss their wives, sisters. Also, bear a burden. Let me close with a letter from a sister. Sometimes we fail to recognize those who may not have been as close as mom and dad, husband and mother. The loss of a loved one in the armed forces is so encompassing of everyone their lives touched. My brother, who was 19 years older than me, when he passed, he was married and had two young daughters. I was a sixth grader at the time. It was the first time that I ever faced the permanency 
The idea that a person could be gone forever, it was foreign to me at that age. I watched my family mourn and grieve and the, commun the community rally to support them. A lot of wonderful life lessons, though such sadness. I lost a brother that day, but I also lost a mother. At least as she was. The woman who raised me was forever changed for good and bad. It can change the trajectory of so many lives and you don't even realize. Thank you for remembering and honoring these men and women and all of those who love them. Okay, we're going to uh, move it along, please. Um, what I'd like to ask now is the um, Gold Star Linda Schumann and Karen Zook come forward, please, with comments. You need some more water? Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon. Hi. We want to thank everyone for coming. I know it's a hot afternoon, and I thank you for enduring this heat on behalf of our fallen sons and daughters. So thank you very much. We will try to keep this very brief. Right now we would like to um, introduce you to the bravest women on earth. And those are the Gold Star Mothers. Would you please stand? It's very, very hot, so we're gonna just get right to it. Um, one by one, ladies, would you mind coming forward? And we'd like to give you a, have you take your rose and um, say your son or daughter's name. And then also tell us the family members that are here with you today. Hello, I'm the mother of Chief Warrant Officer Scott Dyer. My husband, Steve Miller, who is Scott's real father, is here. And my daughter-in-law came from Fort Bragg to be here with us today, Jody Dyer, who would be Scott's wife of 26 years last month. I'd like to also tell you just a little bit, Scott served in the Army for 19 years. He had one month one day and one year left to retire. And he's gone, but he's not forgotten. Thank you. I am the mother of Major Samuel Mark Griffith. He served in the United States Marine Corps as a forward air controller in the 4th Anglico in West Palm Beach. He was killed in Afghanistan, December 14th, 2011. I'm here with my beloved husband, Sam's stepfather, Don Bischoff, who also served in the U United States Army. Um, Sam was an F-18 pilot. He loved what he did. He then went into do, to be a FAC controller. And on the night he was killed, they were under heavy attack 
and he sacrificed his life for his men. He vowed that they would all return home, and they did. I'm Kathy Sandberg. My son is HM2, Brendan Sandberg. Brendan was born and raised in Stewart and St. Lucie County. He was um, with uh, Search and Rescue. He, he graduated from John Carroll High School in 2000. He's with Search and Rescue in Yuma, Arizona. And after his second tour in Iraq, he and three brave Marines were killed in a helicopter crash in Yuma. I am here with my husband, Gene, and Brendan's brother, Garrett. He's also survived by a sweet little girl named Aubrey and a wife named Jana, and another brother, Jeremy. Thank you. My name is Ralph Salerno, and I am representing Gold Star Mother Mary Salerno. Mary is 95, and it's a little difficult for her to come up. So, Mom, this is for you. Uh, also, my brother Michael Salerno is uh, is here. One other brother, John, is up in New Jersey, couldn't make it. My brother, uh, Anthony, Lance Corporal Anthony Salerno, uh, United States Marine Corps, died in 1967 in Vietnam, the same year I graduated high school. He was 20 years old. God bless. If we could interject something, Mary Salerno, we believe, is the oldest living Gold Star mother in the state of Florida. My name is Kim Metcalf. I'm a proud mother. PFC Michael Metcalf of Boynton Beach. Um, he was killed in action April of 2012. And uh, I'm very proud to be here and with all these women who took me under their wings. I know I'm part of them, but um, it's just new still. Um, he was in the 82nd Airborne in Fort Bragg. And um, I'm here with my very good friend, who, Kathy Gwen of Boynton, and she's done a lot for my son throughout our community in Boynton. So thank you, Kathy. I'm Fran Wilson, mother of Lance Corporal Justin Wilson. Um, Justin, especially after 9-11, always had it in his mind that he was going to join a branch of service and he would hound me if he could and I kept telling him no and finally I gave him the okay and he joined in 2009 and was killed March 22nd, 2010. He was proud to wear the uniform and I'm proud of him. I'm here with my husband Lance, Justin's brother Chris, my brother Eddie, my sister-in-law Linda, my niece Donna, and my great-niece, Lexi. Um, without them, I don't think I would have survived. So I love you guys, and thank you for your support. I'm Lorraine Conti. I am the mother of Matthew Gale Conti. He was a corpsman. He was killed on uh, February 1st, 2007 in Haditha, Iraq. Um, when he first joined, he told me, he said, I'm going to go in the Navy, Mom. And I said, okay, that's good. I thought we were in the war. There's no water over there. It's all sand. Then he said, Mom, they tested me and I'm going to be a corpsman. I said, Matt, that's so good. He said, yeah, that's almost like a doctor. And I said, yeah. He said, Mom, I'm stationed in Hawaii with a Marine group. I said, you are? And he said, yeah. He said, and guess what, Mom? I said, what? We're going to Afghanistan. I said, oh, OK. He came home from Afghanistan. And I went and counted his toes and his fingers, and he was all there. Then the next year, he went to Iraq. 
And I can remember the last time he talked to us, he says, I'm over here, Mom. It's different than Afghanistan. He says, you can't trust anyone over here. And I don't know what I'm going to be like when I came home. It was in one month of coming home, that, that one golden window, that one month, and he was riding in the back of a Humvee, doing nothing, and they hit an IED. And he was blown out of the IED and he was killed. He came home all in one piece, but it's not the same. Hello. My name is Ray Cantrell. <clears throat> My son was Chief Board Officer, second grade, Edward Dwayne Cantrell. He was 18 years Special Forces. We've done seven tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. And three weeks before his eighth tour, the house caught fire in the middle of the night. And I lost my son, my four-year-old granddaughter, Natalia, and my six-year-old granddaughter, Bella. Dwayne wouldn't leave him. And we died with him. That was four years ago. And I was extremely proud of him. He was highly decorated. And I had numerous soldiers come to me to tell me they owed him his life, their lives. And that, um, that was a big comfort, but we miss him dearly. Thank you, Dawn, my niece Dawn Wynn, for bringing me and helping me through this. And all of you, um, he was stationed in Fort Bragg, so I've just recently moved back home by myself. They're all gone. And uh, thank you. I am Michelle Dale. My son, Corporal Dale J. Cridlow, was killed in Afghanistan on November 7th in 2016 in an ambush. He was my youngest son. I loved him dearly. I miss him dearly. He has two daughters who live in Fort Collins, Colorado. They have their own problems with this loss. He has a brother who lives in Germany. His name is Damien, missed by everybody. I am here today with my husband, Ken, who is Dale's stepfather. And in spirit with me, I know my mom, my dad are here with me, and I'm thankful for that. One thing I am proud to say is my son died doing what he wanted to do, and with that, I could be at peace. Thank you. We are Esther and Len Wolfer the parents to Major Stuart Adam Wolfer, a son, a brother, an uncle, a husband, father of three girls, and a friend to many. Stuart graduated from J.P. Taravilla High School, Coral Springs, Florida, Washington University, and Loyola Law School. Stuart served in Kuwait and the Green Zone, Baghdad, Iraq. Stewart was killed by an indirect mortar attack to the fitness center within the green zone, April 6, 2008. Stewart's aunt and uncle, Marianne and Neil Wolfer, are with us today. These are our children. We worked our lives to produce these children that grew into fine adults. Each of these sons and daughters gave us a special love. These men and women each sacrificed his, her life, so that we are able to stand here today, free of oppression, able to speak, and live our lives as we choose. We stand here today to thank each of you, the community, my fellow Gold Star parents and family members of fallen heroes, for the free life that we have today. My name is Beth Agami. 
My son was Special Army Specialist Daniel Lagami. He was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and at the age of five, we moved to Florida. So he was pretty much raised down here in South Florida. At the age of 23, he decided he wanted to join the Army. And what could we say? He was an adult, and that's what he was going to do, and he did it with much pride. <sighs> While serving in Iraq, he had some interesting experiences, one of, what, one of which one was to have the opportunity to meet with Bill O'Reilly when he was there doing a book signing. And while there, he was, of all people, because he didn't understand why he was chosen to go there to do this, because he was one of the few Jewish infantrymen on the front lines. And given that first opportunity to do a menorah lighting at the Christmas lighting that they held in the palace of Saddam Hussein. So it was a very exciting moment for him in his life, and he was also interviewed on the streets of Baghdad for the O'Reilly Factor the following night. Um, unfortunately, he and four other brave heroic soldiers were killed in an IED, by an IED, um, in June of 2007. And um, I just want to say that my husband is here with me, my husband Itzik, and my daughter Shana, my son Elon, and his wife Alicia, and my grandson Daniel. And my mother is here too with us, taking pictures, of course. <laughs> Her name is Sandy. My name is Jimmy Weaver. I'm here with my husband, Don Weaver. We lost our youngest son, Todd. Todd was an amazing person. And I remember back to his senior year of high school when 9-11 happened. He came home that day and I, I never saw that look in his face before, anger and sadness and sorrow. And he said to us that day he would make a difference for our country. He went on to college, but within the first semester he had already joined the National Guard and was called out and ended up in Iraq, in Mosul, Iraq. He spent the year there and then he came home and he went back to college, the College of William and Mary. He joined ROTC, became the commander of the ROTC. He graduated summa cum laude at Phi Beta Kappa, and in the course of less than a week, he also married his wife, Emma, and his baby daughter, Kylie. Or no, he didn't marry, he didn't marry Kylie, sorry. So, so he married his wife, and he was off to Army advanced training and ranger school, and then he was assigned to the 101st Airborne Air Assault Division and went to Afghanistan. And one night, on a nighttime patrol leading his men, he just stepped on an IED and was killed instantly. That was September 9th, 2010. He left his wife and a baby who was just almost a year old, a brother, two sisters, many nephews and nieces, and a mother and a father. And we are so very proud of him. We miss him every day. But he died doing what he knew that he needed to do. He is remembered by many for his leadership, his love, his friendship, and his smile. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'll make it real quick. My name is Mildred Negron. Um, my son, Julio Negron, was born in Puerto Rico, brought up in Pompano Beach, and followed his brother's, brother's footsteps. Sergeant Negron um, retired after 22 years, and his middle brother, which is still um, serving the military. Um, he unfortunately was not supposed to go out 
that afternoon, one of his soldiers was really tired, had just come from a convoy, and he told him, look, I'll, I'll take the ride for you. Um, they were ambushed. They threw a whole bunch of kids in front of him, and he loved kids. He loved all his nephews and nieces, and they just couldn't do it. He, he just couldn't run over the kids. So they, avo they avoided it. When they avoided all the kids, they went down a hill, hit some train tracks, and um, he was on the top. He, uh, he was infantry, artillery. They're all, everybody in the family is military, and I get confused. <laughs> but however, um, he didn't survive, and I'm here representing all the mothers that ha were not able to come here. Um, they're always in our prayers, and um, the battle goes on. Thank you. With your permission, I'll speak uh, for my wife and myself, my wife Evelyn, and we're here with our sister, my sister-in-law, Christina. And we're here for two of our children. Our oldest son, I have to get my strength from my wife. This mother should not have to bury a child, let alone three children. Um, our son, Lance Corporal Jeremy Santiago, India Company, 3rd Battalion, 2nd Marines. Jeremy served in operations in the Philippines and Indonesia and was billeted to uh, go to um, Somalia, an operation restore when he, uh, his Jeep overturned and he was killed. Thank God the two Marines that were with him survived. And our daughter, M. M. and Adrian Santiago, who went into the Air Force to honor her brother at the age of 18 and came home to us at the age of 20, a 100% disabled veteran who succumbed, succumbed to the injury she sustained on active duty. And uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, these children that are coming back they're doing six, seven, eight, ten tours. You just can't imagine the horrors of war. Please stand by them, help them, because certainly the VA cannot do it alone. We have to watch out for our children. Please, thank you very much. Appreciate it. here on behalf of my son, Corporal Ian Thomas Zook, killed in action, Iraq, October 12th, 2004. I'm here standing for my daughter, Amy, and I'm here with my husband, Mark, my son-in-law, Kenny, who was 82nd Airborne as well, and my granddaughter, Jillian, who is named after her uncle, Ian. Thank you. I believe I'm the last one, so I have all the rest of the four. Um, I'm the proud mother of Jordan Christopher Schumann. He was a specialist in the U.S. Army. He was an MP. He was killed July 5th, 2011 in Afghanistan on a rescue mission with two other soldiers and an interpreter. Um, the laughter stopped that day. He had such a laugh. And that's what everybody really misses about him is he just lit up the world. But he's now living with Jesus and he's making fun up there. But um, our family is just, our families are the only thing that gets us through this. And so my family, I have my 93 year old mother, his grandmother, Ruth Justice, his brother, Clay Jr., 
his assumed wife to be, Jen. And on the second row, we have his favorite Aunt Sue. Somewhere out here is his favorite Aunt Meg. I don't know where she's at. She's not up here. Oh, there she is back there. And we also have his dad, Clay Sr. And we have his wife, and Sarah, and his son, Tristan, with us. have a few other Gold Star family members here. Um, I know there was a Gold Star son whose father was killed in World War II here today. And thank you, sir. And I know there's Gold Star nieces, nephews, grandmas, grandpas, and the list goes on. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming. I thank all of you for honoring our children. And now you can see why these are the bravest men, women in the world. Thank you. Retrieve the colors. amount of heat I'm going to uh, move forward to the unveiling of the memorial this is what we've been waiting for all along um, there are four husbands that I would like to uh, to place Reese at the bottom of the memorial once it's uncovered but the gold star fathers come forward please okay is this a special time um, Woody Williams, uh, would you please cut the ribbon and the Gold Star Fathers come around, please? Gold Star Fathers. Everybody count to three. One, One two, two, three. three. Just, just hang on to the wreath for just a second, please. What I like to do at this time is just um, we pause and reflect on this very special moment. This memorial is being dedicated today to the city of Port St. Lucie, St. Lucie County, the cities and counties of the Treasure Coast, the Space Coast, Eastern Half, of the state of Florida and the eastern seaboard from the Florida 
a correction, from Jacksonville to Miami-Dade County. So, ladies and gentlemen, I proclaim this your memorial to the Gold Star families. Thank you. <laughs> gentlemen, lay the wreaths at the bottom of each panel. Chaplain Mile Gill, step forward, please. All rise and uncover. I, too, am the son of a World War II vet, bow the bolt. I do am a veteran and the father of a veteran. I looked hard and looked long to come up with these words. Brothers and sisters, families isn't always about blood that we share. It's those willing to bleed for you. From Ecclesiastic 3, one through eight. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pick, a in which we have planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather up together, and a time to refrain from embracing, and a time to embrace, a time to get, and a time to lose a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to reap, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. So let it, so I swear it's not too late. In finishing, my God bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you, and grace unto us this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Flag detail, retire the colors. All rise. gentlemen this concludes the dedication thank you so much for coming have a great day and a safe trip home thank you thank you thank you